In my last video, I briefly theorized about a younger Romulan who was so bigoted, he thought that children who were born blind should be killed versus spending the resources to help them. I waved it off as perhaps a soldier being uneducated or buying into the propaganda without the experience to back it up. In this episode, let's really analyze the culture of the Romulan Star Empire. Before we get into the breakdown proper, I think it's fair considering the mentality to both sides in the TNG episode, The Defector. As a brief primer, the Enterprise receives a distress call only to discover a Romulan warbird pursuing a Romulan scout, attempting to destroy it. The scout ship is disabled, but not before it enters into Federation space, and the Enterprise raises shields around the scout, daring the warbird to fire on them. The warbird instantly withdraws and the Defector beams aboard. The Romulan requests to talk to the captain giving wild tales about Romulan buildups in the neutral zone about to attack the Federation. When you look how the Defector and the crew of the Enterprise treat each other, I honestly find both sides to be incredibly uncharitable. When their Enterprise crew begins questioning the Defector, they're wanting to determine if he's a spy and they are excited to begin dissecting the Romulan ship, only to be aghast that he would set the ship to self-destruct. The Defector calls the Enterprise crew cowards, only looking to exploit him and his ship. He seems only happy to lean on the bias and prejudice of the Empire about how the Federation operates. But no duh, they're excited to look at your ship. The crew of the Enterprise wants to exploit you and your tech, that's no lie. But you are the one telling them they are about to be in a massive war and most interactions with the Romulans ends in thousands of Starfleet officers and or citizens dead. So to think that they aren't going to want to question your motives or want to gain an edge up on your technology is incredibly naive. But by that notion, the Enterprise crew are, again, aghast that he would blow up his ship. Surprised that he won't give up vital information about his comrades that isn't relevant to what he's trying to warn them about. And remember, the crew is acting this way before they discover that the Romulan Warbird was pulling its punches. It's not out of the realm of possibility that someone in the Romulan Star Empire would want to prevent war while still being a patriot. While you can betray your country, you may not necessarily be betraying your kinsmen, if that makes any sense. At least in fiction. Apparently in real life, that's not possible. Again, both sides are being incredibly unrealistic in their thinking about the other. The Enterprise crew should have some empathy for someone who wants to stop war, but does love their country. And the Romulan defector should realize that the Enterprise crew is going to attempt to gain any advantage it can, just in case they find themselves in a shooting war. On that note, we'll be talking about the Romulan leadership's modus operandi after this. Hey guys, I know how much you absolutely love these commercials in the middle of my videos. Thanks to YouTube changes to the algorithm, I now make less than ever before. So if you want to continue to support the channel, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded. Get a YouTube membership by clicking on the join button, or if you hate Patreon, you can give a one-time payment to PayPal in the description below. For those who want these to stop, once I hit my goal on Patreon, you won't see any more commercials for as long as it stays that way. Be the change you want to see in the world. With that out of the way, let's just get back into it. Looking back at the Romulan Star Empire High Command and their modus operandi, a defector goading the Federation into the Romulan neutral zone does appear to be standard operating procedure. During the TNG era, at least, they never make the first move. They always want to be reactionary, though they will use subterfuge to try and force the hand of their enemy. It's always about being the defender, a chess game. A defector, an admiral that comes in at the last hour and talks the captain into committing an act of war, thus forcing a response by the Romulans, is something they do in spades. And honestly, the way they work here feels like a natural progression from the Romulan Star Empire we see in the original series. 
The Romulans of that era were boastful, stout, making the first move. This resulted in the loss of their prized ship and, ultimately, the enemy getting their cloaking device. Perhaps the Romulans of the Star Trek Enterprise series and era utilized subterfuge, which made them prideful in the original series, and ultimately they returned to the roots in the next generation. Just a thought. But focusing on the TNG era of the Romulans, it's an interesting view to see how an admiral, presumably well-to-do, considers the members of the Federation. I've stated it before, but he reasons that those within Starfleet to be full of cowards, always looking for an advantage or to take advantage. There is no trust or love lost with him. Curiously, it feels that way with both sides. They both appear to treat each other with the same level of disrespect. And ironically, they say the same things about each other. Both the Federation and Romulan Star Empire think that the other is trying to destroy their way of life. That they're willing to do this through subterfuge, through killing, through whatever they have to do to get ahead. It's quite interesting how we always look at the other side and think they are the ones that have the problem. As the Admiral continues to try to convince the crew, things continue to make less sense, become even more suspicious. As stated, the crew determined that the Warbird actually pulled its punches so the scout could escape. But all of his words may be for naught as Picard outright refuses to listen and commit his ship to what could be a build-up for war unless the Admiral completely betrays his people. I love how well acted this scene is. You can tell the toll it takes on the character. I'm being somewhat vague when it comes to this episode because I want you to watch it if you haven't or re-watch it if you haven't seen it in a while. The Admiral would ultimately betray his country, giving information on troop layouts, information on where strategic placements are, as well as tactical information on Romulan technology. With this information gained, the Enterprise would enter into the neutral zone to see if they could determine if there was a military buildup. You know, because when I think about stopping an invasion of over 30 Romulan warbirds, I think of sending in one Galaxy-class starship with the family still on board. However, you all will be saved from my rant about families on military ships as the crew and the Admiral discover that this entire affair, the military deployments, the schedules, the timetables, was all fiction to test the Admiral and see if he was a traitor as well as strike a blow to the Federation. You know, when considering the Romulan High Command and how they trick the Admiral, how they treat him, it honestly almost feels Cardassian. This tells us that there are people who want peace within the Empire, who think that war with the Federation will doom both sides, but they are censured and silenced by the ruling elite, by the military. This is something we see happening in Deep Space Nine with the Cardassians and their own people. And while it's a little bit benign, I would argue that it happens within Starfleet to some small degree. As we had discussed, the entire situation was a trap for both the Enterprise and the Admiral. Tom Locke would be sitting behind a cloak with only two vessels waiting to destroy the Enterprise and bolster the ranks of their own military. Most will remember the ending, but for the small chance that some haven't seen this episode, I'm going to leave it vague. I already said it before, but The Defector is definitively in the top five TNG episodes for me, and it's worth watching, or watching again. In this episode, we find out more about the Romulans, the Romulan military, and their culture. We find the High Command is looking to start a fight, that they want a war. War is on the horizon. We also find that there are people that see the folly in this for what it is. We get the sense that both sides are so scared of each other that they lose their nature to a degree, willing to become what they fear to get an edge on the enemy, or at least perceived enemy. There is so much mistrust between the two at a political and military level that it's sad that they don't see how much they are so alike. I also found the very ending powerful. The Admiral kills himself not wanting to become a pawn of the Federation against his own kinsmen. He also feels that he's disgraced himself. He leaves a letter for his wife and child, knowing that it wouldn't be able to be delivered at this moment. I sincerely feel sad and I think that it's a shame that he would die not knowing that the letter would be able to be passed on to his wife, and it would happen within the next decade when the Romulan Star Empire and the Federation became allies. But that's a long, long time from now, and there's a lot of hostility that will happen before.